welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Melanie. I was a little nervous about recording outside because we kind of live close to a road. So I can't tell if you can hear the road noises in the background. If you can, I'm sorry, but it's nice outside and it's finally feeling like summer. So I wanted to come outside. <laughs> I'm a little nervous to do this video because I don't want it to be like a woe me video. I know that a lot of people struggle for really long periods of time with infertility and I just don't want to minimize that at all because that's not what this story is about. And so really quickly, I just want to say like if you are struggling with infertility, I can't imagine what you're going through, at least not yet. Who knows? Maybe I will. I've only just started trying, but, but at this moment, I can't understand how you're feeling and I just feel so incredibly deeply for you if you are trying to have a kid and you are struggling with it. So again, the purpose of this video is mostly just to kind of share a story and then also to kind of give you guys a sense of like how bad I want kids and how long I've wanted kids for. And like I've said in past videos, my life doesn't revolve around cancer anymore, but the reason I'm bringing this up is because it does kind of pertain to our whole journey in trying to have a baby. So for those of you who don't know, um, when I was 25, which was about two and a half years ago, wait, was I 25, 27? I guess I was 27. I can't really remember how old I was, but it was about two and a half years ago, so I guess I was 27. I was diagnosed with two forms of lymphoma. I had stage four non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, I had diffuse large B cell and follicular lymphoma. Now I, pretty sure I mentioned this in some videos, but I actually switched oncologists after I think my first round of chemo because I had not a great experience with the first one. Pretty much the whole first hospital experience was awful. Like we had an issue with the pick line that I got put in which later I ended up getting a port because of how bad the pick line was. And I did a whole video on that. But the biggest issue I had was this one that I'm gonna share right now. So I'm pretty sure I've mentioned this all before in past videos, but it's been a long time. So I'm just gonna retell the story anyway. So I'm sorry if it's a little bit of repeat for you guys. But when I started having like lumps and bumps in the back of my head, um, I went to my doctor. At first they thought it was just like infected glands or whatnot. And then we did a CT scan, found out it was all of my lymph nodes that were really swollen. And then eventually I did the biopsy. And so this is where the story picks up. So I'm at work we've just got the biopsy done a few days prior and I don't know the results yet however at this point I'm feeling really confident that it's lymphoma like I've done my own research and of course anytime you go on Google it's like you automatically have cancer but at this point I'm just really convinced that I actually do have cancer like I actually do have lymphoma so when the doctor called me and let me know that I did have lymphoma at this point they only knew about one form of it because later I had to get bone marrow biopsy so that they can detect the other form of it but when she told me that I had cancer I I was like, okay, that sucks, but I kind of expected it. So, all right, that's fine. And then she told me that I might not be able to have kids. That is where I broke down and started crying because if you know me, you know, I have wanted to have kids since I was 13. And I don't mean like I dreamed of someday being a mom at 13. I mean like I wanted to fall pregnant at 13 and be a mother. Thank the Lord that I did not do that. <laughs> I wasn't even, you know, participating in the activities that would have been required to get pregnant at that age. So again, thank God none of that happened. But I have wanted to have kids for so long and I have wanted to get married before having kids. And so at this point, I'm maybe 29 at the end of this month, which is really not that Old and I'm aware of that but for me it's like I have wanted to physically become pregnant for over a decade now and so to be told that I might not be able to have kids was just devastating. Now when I went in to actually speak to my oncologist after she had called me and let me know I had cancer I kind of asked her more about this whole not being able to have kids thing because that mattered a lot to me and she told me that essentially certain types of chemo can cause what's called amenorrhea which essentially means that you quit having your period. In other words you quit ovulating therefore you quit having your period therefore you can't get pregnant. Now, what was awful about this situation is that my oncologist didn't even know if the chemo that I was going to be on would actually affect my fertility, which to be fair, sometimes there isn't research about that. But then when I talked to my other oncologist, it seemed to me like maybe there kind of was and she just didn't know what she was talking about because she literally told me that she had a friend who had breast cancer, which was not the same cancer as me, had to go through chemo and radiation, which was probably a different chemo than I did and I didn't do radiation. And then 
afterwards, her friend found out that she had amenorrhea and essentially wasn't going to be able to naturally get pregnant. So why she just kind of put this blanket idea of, oh, if you have chemo, you're not going to be able to get naturally pregnant in the future? I don't know because that's clearly not the case. Spoiler alert, I'm currently on my period. Sorry if that's DMI. But um, about a month after chemo, I did start getting my period. So I'm kind of getting ahead. So let me go back a bit. So at the time I was getting regular periods, I actually had just gotten off of hormonal birth control, which I had been on for like a decade. Anywhere between the pill, the Nuva ring, and then at the end I had the IUD and then I got that taken out just because I felt like it was really messing with my acne and I was just really over hormonal birth control. And so I was having pretty regular periods prior to being diagnosed with lymphoma. Then when I was going through chemo, in order to prevent infections, what I had to do was actually take Lupron shots. I think it's called Lupron, but essentially it's like a Depovera shot. They stuck it in my booty. <laughs> it wasn't comfortable, but I went in every like, I can't remember if it was every month or every three months, but I went in occasionally and got this shot, um, which essentially just works like birth control. It prevented me from ovulating. So again, it prevented me from having a period. And the whole idea was just to prevent any possibility for infections since when you do go through chemo, and again, I'm sure it depends on what kind of chemo, but it, it makes you immunocompromised. And so any little thing from shaving your legs to having a period can cause a really bad life-threatening infection. So we prevented all of those things. Then once I was done with chemo, I officially didn't have to get a Lupron shot anymore. And I waited every single day and I just hoped and prayed for my period. Now, if you are a woman who has had a period, you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, I have never hoped or prayed for my period. They're awful. But when your ability to conceive naturally rides on you being able to have a period, you just cannot wait to have your next period. And so I can't remember exactly how long it was because it's been a while, but I think it was about a month after. Well, it was um, about four months after I had taken my last Lupron shot, which was about a month after I had ended my last round of chemo, something like that. And I finally got my period and holy cannoli was it a bad one i mean when you don't have a period for a while and then all of a sudden you do it is a lot <laughs> again sorry if that's tmi but if you're not into tmi then you might not want to be on this video or on this channel because i am the queen of TMI. Anyways, so um, ever since then, I've been having pretty regular periods, which has been really exciting. Um, back in December and January, I got really nervous because they started getting all sorts of wonky. And fortunately, I actually realized they're n they weren't as wonky as I thought they were. So in December and January, so in December, I had a really long cycle. I actually had 30 days from the beginning of one period to the beginning of the next, which is like way long for me. Normally I'm about 25 days and, and I guess 30 felt really long. Looking back at it now, I was like really, really stressed and had a lot of anxiety. I actually had to go see a counselor for it. And that's probably what caused me to have a delayed period. I probably ovulated late. And then in January, that stress and anxiety continued. And then in January, I only had a 20 day cycle, which was actually really short for me. And looking back at it now, because I was so stressed and anxious, I probably just didn't ovulate that cycle. Then after that, the cycles have actually been pretty regular. Again, in March, I had a bit of a late one, but I mean, COVID started, we had just bought a new house. So again, a lot of stress and anxiety, but since then it's been pretty regular. So I'm really excited because the next video I'm going to do, I am going to explain how I'm trying to get pregnant and kind of give you pregnancy tips on how to get pregnant as quickly as possible. Of course, assuming that, you know, there's no medical issues, no endometriosis, PCOS, no problems with, you know, the male reproductive system and that whole side of it. So anyways, this wasn't exactly a positive video. <laughs> it wasn't exactly intended to be. I just wanted to share my story and maybe some other people can relate and I just pray that it gave you some sort of hope and something to at least feel relatable to I don't know I guess that's the point of these videos I just want to make you feel like you can relate to someone so if you like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up as always make sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future and I'll see you guys next time bye